Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our program today. You may know that Family Talk is a listener-supported program, and we remain on the air by your generosity, literally. If you can help us financially, we would certainly appreciate it. God's blessings to you all. Today on Family Talk. Suicide. It's a horrible phenomenon that is affecting more and more families every year. Whether it stems from bullying, drug abuse, or mental illness, in the minds of some people, the taking of one's life is the only answer to their cries for help. Hello everyone, I'm Roger Marsh, and glad you've joined us for today's edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk, as we will dive into this dark topic and offer some practical advice to identify those who are hurting in your life. Filling in for Dr. Dobson on today's broadcast is Dr. Tim Clinton, president of the American Association of Christian Counselors. Today, we'll hear an exclusive conversation Dr. Clinton had with Dr. Frank Page, recorded at the AACC World Conference in Nashville, Tennessee, last fall. Dr. Page is currently the president and CEO of the Southern Baptist Convention Executive Committee and is the author of seven books. He'll share how his own daughter, Melissa, committed suicide in the fall of 2009 and how her death impacted his family and what God taught him through this tragedy. Let's listen now to this touching conversation on today's edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Dr. Page, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Clinton. I'm honored to be here. You know, as we get started, um, starting a conversation with you gets pretty emotional fast. We're going to talk about your little girl, Melissa. Uh, And Dr. Page, um, your family went through a pretty tough time, uh, including the loss of her. Do you mind just taking us back for a moment? Sure, sure. She lived a troubled life uh, in many, many ways, but unfortunately, uh, she chose to commit suicide in 2009. So it was November the 27th, the day after Thanksgiving, when she committed suicide. And it uh, obviously was a horrific, horrific thing. Changed our family and our lives forevermore. Uh, She called me that morning. She said, Daddy, I love you. And I said, well, baby, I love you too. She said, Daddy, please tell Mama and the girls, meaning her siblings, that I love them. And then red flags began flashing. And I said, well, honey, why don't you tell them that? Trying to draw her out a little bit. And she said, Daddy, I can't. Please tell Mama and the girls I love them. Daddy, I love you. Baby, I love you. Click. Then found out later that she committed suicide at that point. was not long after that I received a call from one of my church members who watched everything. Pastor, why is there an ambulance at your daughter's house? And so I rushed there to be told that she was taken to the hospital. Went to the hospital finding out that she had died. A physician in my church who played guitar in the praise band came out to tell me of Melissa's death. So it was a horrible time, obviously. That was 2009. And it's been a few years since then, but it still is something I deal with every day, something I will never be totally over, but God's grace was very sufficient. Let me just tell you this, Tim, I I was alone because my wife, had; she was actually en route to Georgia at that moment. She, of course, turned around and came back, but I was by myself, and I didn't know what to do. When you get news like that, what do you do? Uh, But I got on my knees. And I began quoting scripture. And uh, I know the Lord doesn't need to hear scripture because he wrote it, but I needed to say words that he had written that I had memorized. So I quoted Job 121b, which is difficult to quote in that kind of circumstance, but it was true. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then I quoted John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and I prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So I I received comfort, Tim, from the Word of God. Uh, And it ministered to me and does to this day that God prepares a place for those who love him. And that gave me great comfort, still does. Melissa, um, I know how 
dear she was to you. We've talked about her. Yep. Yep. Tell us about her growing yeah. up for a moment. She was wild. She was crazy. She was <laughs> sweet. She could be meaner than a junkyard dog. She was everything. A very creative person. Struggled, however, how in school, though she was the smartest of all my daughters, she liked to talk and be social, with, particularly with boys. She had her high points, as all of us do, and her low points. Uh, in 2006, she was diagnosed with cancer. She went through it. Um, again, I had just been elected president of the SBC, so I thought it was not coincidental that she would come down with that illness at that time. When one goes through those kinds of cancer treatments, and she came out of it well, and I was so proud of the way she handled it, and my wife took care of her so beautifully. She was married, but Dale would pick her up every day and bring her home, and I teasingly say she would eat my food and sit in my chair all day long. But Dale took beautiful care of her. But she had an addictive personality, let's just put it that way. And and when one is on these treatments, the physicians will just throw all kinds of medicines at you. Well, Melissa would use them and want more. I uh, found out later that she had gone into doctor shopping. She would go from doctor to doctor trying to get as many legal medicines. She didn't use anything illegal that I know of, but she would misuse legal drugs and buy them illegally and get them from doctors inappropriately. So she began developing some addiction to drugs. Uh, and some of those drugs you see advertised that do exacerbate suicidal tendencies. And I do urge people to be very careful with those drugs because they can be very strong. And uh, I think I'm pretty sure she had just been put on a new round of medication. She was under the care of a psychiatrist. And I told her toward the end, Melissa, you need to be hospitalized. Something is wrong. Something has changed in your behavior. And she told me she was just fine. And her psychiatrist said she did not need hospitalization. I said, well, honey, no one loves you like your daddy. No one knows you like your daddy. And I'm telling you, baby, you need help. I'm fine. And, of course, then days later, what happened happened. So she was quite an interesting individual. If she were in this room right now, she would take it over. She had a very strong personality, beautiful little girl, again, just uh, full of life, full of vim and vigor. And I will be honest with you, I miss her deeply. I miss her terribly. You know, there are anniversaries that you expect to miss someone who's passed on. But as I often say, and I heard it from someone, I stole it from some preacher somewhere, who knows, grief is like waves on a seashore. Uh, they never stop. They do decrease both in frequency and intensity over time, praise God, but they never stop. And they sometimes come when you expect them, anniversaries, birthdays, those kinds of things. But sometimes they come unbidden. I dream of her still regularly. Sometimes just out of the blue, the, the waves of grief come back um, because you miss her. I miss her. I've heard it said that those who love much grieve much, too. Yes, I think that's true. Dr. Page, um, it's interesting listening to your story, too. Uh, I read about how, and we've talked about this, in the midst of all this challenge and trouble that was going on, she had this... Um, a real burden to win people to Christ. Yeah, you know there was. Yeah. It, it's like this, this, these yeah. polar opposite yeah. things going on yeah. inside of her. And I think it's important to share with our listeners because the, the people get confused yeah. and they they're trying to figure out what's going on inside her heart or mind. Yeah, uh, and that's a great point. If they're thinking about their own uh, child, Doctor Page. You're, I want to you're talk right. to moms and dads for a minute. You're right. Because. Every parent, this is the thing we're, we're absolutely terrified of. Yeah, it is. And you wake up, and I woke up every day wondering if this would happen, and it did. And I pray that it wouldn't happen to anyone listening. I pray that, and I know if your child is struggling, you fear that, particularly in a society such as we live today, Tim, that uh, glorifies it in some ways, and it is epidemic in many levels. What's happening in modern-day society is scary. And you're right. Yeah. I mean, there are games on the internet and, and more just pushing our kids in these directions. Yeah. It's not, a, it's emptiness, it's nothing. You hear what yeah. I'm saying? There's nothingness yeah. out there. Yeah, it is. And uh, please believe me, at parents, I, I've got an email I've not yet responded to of someone I met in Maryland two or three years ago who's reached out to me whose son just committed suicide. And I just grieve for that family. 
and I will try to reach out to them and just know that in your child there are many voices that call for their attention and allegiance. And most every child I know, they, they're, it's not a simple black or white, they're all for the Lord or all not. That's just not true. In every child, there are multiple voices calling out for attention. And every child, may they may have you know the Lord speaking to them, and they can have that spiritual side. The Bible talks about our carnal side and our spiritual side. And we know they're true and they're present in every life. Dr. Page, what would you say to the mom or dad, teacher, pastor? I mean, they, they're, they're fearful that someone's on the edge to take their life. What, would you, what do you encourage them to do? Thank you. That's an excellent point, Tim. And I, I encourage them, first of all, uh, to pray for their child like they've never prayed and to gather around them some prayer supporters who will pray for specific things about that child, not just to pray, God bless Melissa or whoever he or she may be, but to pray for specific things in their life, for relationships that would be positive, for uh, development of habits and disciplines that would be encouraging. Um, pray for them. Seconds, get them Christian psychological assistance, counseling uh, from godly counselors, and praise God for the American Association of Christian Counselors. Praise God that provides so many resources and, and uh, books and articles to help give counselors and, and mental health uh, practitioners good tools. So they need that kind of assistance. Uh, third, love them unconditionally. And let them know, you're my baby girl, you're my baby boy, I love you no matter what you do, what you don't do, who you are, what, you know, whatever happens, I love you. And they need that kind of unconditional affirmation from mama and daddy. Um, that being said, also, I pray they're a part of a church that's sensitive and caring. We've talked about this many times in the church. We desperately need churches that are places where people are loved. Melissa loved the local church. She was there every time the doors were open, and she did because why? The church people loved her. Oh, they were aware of her um, issues. They they knew she had struggled, and uh, but yet, nonetheless, they loved her, and she responded to that love. So make sure your child's in a place where people really love unconditionally, just like mom and daddies do, and there are God's people all over this nation and world who love just like that. Yeah. Don't be afraid to talk to them about it. No. Speak into the life. I, talk openly about thoughts of suicide. Yes. Do you have a plan of action? Yeah. Even more, if you're really concerned, get to the hospital. Call exactly. 911. Do something. You know why? Because you need to. Yes. Step into their life. You're listening to Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk program. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Clinton, president of the American Association of Christian Counselors, hosting for Dr. Dobson today. Sobering conversation, too, with Dr. Frank Page as we talk about his daughter, Melissa, and uh, her taking her life. Dr. Page, I, I, I want to dial into a little bit of a different direction. Sure. Your dad, your pastor, mm -hmm. can't even begin to imagine the heartbreak inside of you, the potential thoughts of stigma, et cetera. And how'd you do that? Yeah. Thank you, Tim. And that is, uh, it is very true. And in many situations, I see this and I talk with someone this week where there had been a suicide, and the parent of the suicide victim also committed suicide. So it brings a stigma, a ongoing burden. The number of suicides among survivors goes up. We also get involved in what's called the blame game. I've seen so many marriages fail after a suicide. You know, yeah, when you lose a child in particular, yeah. you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and at suicide, yeah. to suicide, yeah. you're right, the, the, the fallout or what it does to our love, yeah. our relationships. But as a pastor, I, I, I try to always to be honest to my people and say, I'm not perfect. I don't have a perfect family. Who, who, who out here is perfect? And my church would be the first to say, well, we're not. No one here is. So when Melissa died, there was uh, an outpouring of love like I have never seen from the church people. Loving me, loving my wife, loving my daughters. To this day, now we're talking years later, um, eight years later, massive love and support. But there is a lot of stigma. And, uh, you know, I've had to ask myself, and, and as, you know, often as I can, 
without being totally just destroyed by it, what could I have done better? What could I do better? Uh, you know, I, I've come back to think uh, I did the best I knew at the time. But we can um, go into a blame game that begins not only with other people, but blaming ourselves. We do need to take responsibility where we've failed. But also we have to move on. And I've just prayed that Melissa's death would be a ministry to other people. And it has been, praise God. And uh, I thank God for that. I know some people, um, they want to try to console you. Mm -hmm. And um, often they say the wrong things at the wrong time yeah. in the morning. I, yeah. What's it like for you? Yeah, well, you know, like, uh, well, you know, Pastor, she's in a better place. Well, I know that's true. But at that moment, I want her beside me. And uh, I tell people a lot of times the best thing to do is not say anything at all. Uh, do what I call the ministry of presence. Uh, I will tell you, Tim, when she died and, and um, we had the funeral, which is kind of hazy in some ways because God puts this fog of haze over your heart and mind, which is a, a good thing. Uh, actually, it's a protective thing. Uh, but at the funeral, then we do the graveside. And in evangelical churches and Baptist churches like I'm a part of, one of the ways church people try to help you is by feeding you into oblivion and putting you into a fried chicken coma, I call it. And uh, so they have supper, excuse me, lunch for the people or supper, whatever it was, after the funeral. Well, I wanted to go back out to my little girl's grave. I took two friends with me. One is a car dealer. He could sell anything to anyone. He's an extremely wealthy man. I led him to Christ in the early 90s. Well, he stood to one side. He didn't know what to say. I didn't need him to say anything. Just needed him there with me. Another man, former uh, commandant of the Delta Force, a general. One of my dearest friends from my days in pastoring in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He's a leader of men. He didn't know what to say. Well, I didn't need him to say anything. I just need him to be there for me. God's people need to learn. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to be there, to sit with people. Ministry of presence. Ministry of presence. You don't need to say anything. But, yeah, you hear silly things like, uh, you know, you just need to snap out of that. Or, you know, she's in a better place. And, and then, of course, the most horrible thing, which has been said on occasion, well, you know, I heard that people that commit suicide go to hell. So... You know, when you hear those things as a grieving parent, ooh, that does not go over well. And, uh, you know, so we need to understand, be careful with our trite little phrases that we use sometimes too much or use them at the wrong time. Uh, just be sensitive to the ministry of presence. Usually that's really the need, not that you, you know, we want to do something. We always want to do something to help people, and that's good. Just be there for them. Pray for them. Pray with them. Be honest and say, I don't know what to say. And just that honesty disarms a, a difficult situation. And this interesting thing, Tim, is my wife and I both experienced this. When we talk about suicide, some people get very nervous, particularly if you don't know them real well. Well, they don't know what to say, and they begin saying all kinds of crazy things or just start stuttering. And, you know, I say to them, listen, you just need to relax. I understand this is a difficult thing to talk about. Dr. Page, you're currently serving as the... CEO of the Southern Baptist Convention Executive Board. Mm -hmm. Very amazing position, a lot of influence. Um, but I wanted to ask you this personal question. Um, what would you do with your anger toward God and the whole thing? Yeah. You can't push it down like a beach yeah. ball underwater and hold it there. You're right, Tim. And But I, I'll just be very transparent with you. I never got angry with God. Wow. Now, I have an anger problem. I have a temper problem. I have an anger issue. I, I admit that. But I never got angry at God. And I, I think he could take it if I was. And to be honest with you, I probably have been before. But about that, I think God allowed my Melissa to do what she did so she would finally be at peace. I don't think my God did that. I know he allowed it. But I think there was a reason for him allowing it. So I, I think our God gives good and perfect gifts, and I've never been angry with the Lord about it. And there, there may be somebody listening says, well, he's denying it. He's pushed it down. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm open to that, if that's true. Says but, something about who you think God is. Well, I do think he's a good father, and 
I just have never been angry with our Lord. For some of us, it takes a while to get there. Yeah, it does. And most people I know, it takes a while to get there, Tim. It really does. And I just say to them, I, you know, I understand that. And again, if you're angry with God, my daughters got angry with me sometimes, Tim. I know that's hard to believe, but they did. And I took it because, you know, I understand that. Our God is able to take it. Dr. Page, what about um, your bride, your wife? How's she doing through this whole process? Thank you. I, I think she would say that she's doing fairly well. Uh, we talk about this regularly, and uh, we've cried together, and we've held each other, and uh, she actually is doing well. She has tried to um, channel some of her grief into other ministries, so she is right now, because of another situation that happened in Melissa's life, she is a mentor and a volunteer at a crisis pregnancy center. And so she honors Melissa's ministry uh, life through ministry. She's done well. And my daughters have done well also. And I praise God for how they have grown through this and used this as a ministry to others as well. Thank you for asking. This story of Melissa is in a book. Yes. And um, you have a ministry out of it. Yeah. I'd love for you to share that with our, our listeners. Tell them a little bit about... Um, what you're hoping to accomplish. Sure. And maybe it's, it'd be an amazing gift sure. to mom or dad yeah. who are, I mean, just yeah. they're, they're broken right now. Thank you, Tim. And, and uh, the idea of this book, and I don't write about everything, and I, I'll be honest about that. I don't think I'm the greatest author. But someone came to me long ago, and I don't remember who it was. Some man, some pastor or someone said, Frank, don't you know the greatest writing is usually comes out of pain. And I said, well, okay, well, I've got plenty of pain. And I started writing it. And I first thought, no, I'm not going to publish a book. But others encouraged me to do so. And I, I approached our friends across the street at Broadman Holman, and they said, please. So I asked them, I said, because I'm not a great writer, put someone with me that is. So they did. The content is all mine. So we published this book, and it sold many, many thousands of copies. It's helped many people. In the book, it tells the story of Melissa. But at the end of every chapter, I write a letter to people considering suicide. I also write to pastors, helping them know how to help people who have gone through suicide. So it's a, it's a book that has many moving parts in it that deals with people who have committed suicide, but hopefully showing people who are considering it what the consequences are. What does it do to those who are behind? And so I don't mind telling you, Tim, I've lost track of how many who people have said, this saved my life. I was struggling, ready to commit suicide, but now I've chosen a different path. And then I've heard from hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands, who have said what the book meant to them. The book has sold well, and I don't mind telling you the proceeds from that. I have now established the second scholarship at one of our seminaries for women students, the Melissa Page Scholarship. So I'm just looking for ways through the book, through its ministry, of how to honor her memory and to honor our Lord. Thanks, Frank, for sharing your story of, of Melissa. I think it's a beautiful gift to uh, all of us. And um, I, I hope uh, you out there, as you've been listening to the program, maybe you're in a dark place right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe your family, you're terrified. Um, or maybe you've actually gone through the same journey that Dr. Page has gone through. Everybody, when you hear this, you're not alone. There's hope. There's help. You just need to take a step in that direction. I want to encourage you right now to contact us here at drjamesdobson.org. Uh, we have resources, encouragement, prayer, and more for you. And uh, take the first step. If you do that, I think God will help lead you each step of the way. Dr. Page, uh, hey, again, thank you for joining us here on Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Thank you, Dr. Clinton. It was an honor to be with you and all those who listen today. What an incredible story of unyielding faith in the midst of tremendous loss. 
If you have a loved one or a friend who is struggling with depression or has vocalized suicidal thoughts, we urge you to call our friends at the American Association of Christian Counselors at 1-800-526-8673. They'll be able to properly help that person who is contemplating suicide to find meaning and purpose in their lives. Again, that number is 800-526-8673. You can also go online to aacc.net to find a Christian counselor near you or to read any of their helpful articles and other information they have there as well. Again, that web address is aacc.net. If you're just seeking for someone to pray for you or with you or for that person in your life, please give us a call at 877-732-6825. Our representatives can talk or pray with you through whatever you are going through. Again, our office number is 877-732-6825. You can also connect with us by emailing contact at myfamilytalk.com. That's simply the word contact at myfamilytalk.com. Well, that wraps up this week of broadcasts. Be sure to join us again next week for all new programs right here on Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Family Talk is not associated with Focus on the Family.